Welcome to Pipes Around the House. In this video, I'm going to show you as a DIYer how to apply a professional bead of sealant. In this particular example, we're going to be applying it to a bathtub, but the general principle applies whether applying it to a bathtub, a shower tray, a basin, and so on. So the first important thing before applying any sealant is preparation. Now, if you've got a new bath and it's the first time a bead of sealant is being applied, then I like to go over it with some white spirits and a rag. Just apply your white spirits by dabbing it upside down onto your rag and then go around the edge where you're going to be applying your sealant with the rag, making sure the surface is nice and clean. Leave that for a few minutes to evaporate off or wipe it down using another clean cloth and then you're ready to go. If on the other hand, like me, you had to remove old dirty sealant prior to applying your new bead of sealant, then you've got a lot more preparation to do. Now I've done this in another video and a link to that video will pop up on the screen now and I'll put a link to that video in the description section below. So let's take a look at some of the tools and products that I use when applying sealant. So first of all, the sealant I'm using is Dow 785+. Plus. This is bacteria resistant. It's a sanitary silicone sealant. It's got um, a lot of good reviews. A lot of people rate this. I find it very nice to work with as to whether or not it's completely bacteria resistant and mold resistant, only time will tell. Usually I find even the better sealants after six or seven years tend to sort of give rise to a bit of mold, but fingers crossed it won't. And on that note, if you've actually got a better sealant that you would recommend, please let me know in the comments below. That's always useful for me and other people watching. Um, and I'm always looking for ways to improve the products or the techniques I'm using. Then you're gonna need a sealant gun like this. There are better, more expensive ones on the market, but I find this one does the job perfectly. A knife for cutting the nozzle of the sealant. One or two old rags. If you watch my other videos, you'll know I like to use my old pants. Some paper roll for cleaning and removing sealant. Some wet wipes again for cleaning and removing sealant from our tool. And then finally, a silicone profiling tool. Now these are what we use to finish off the sealant once we've applied it, and this gives you a nice neat finish. This particular one is made by Kramer. This is the Silicone Profiling Kit 7. It's got a few different profiling tools um, with different size angles, which basically gives you different size beads according to what you want. Now Kramer do other profiling tools as well or other kits. This particular one came with a sealant removing kit as well, which is why I bought it. But other manufacturers do make these as well, so you don't specifically have to get this one. However, if you do want to use this one, I'll put links to this and all the other tools I use in the description section below. So to give you a quick close up of the profiling tool, you can see you've got different size angles there. And these are what we just push against the 90 degree corner between the bathtub and the wall, giving you that nice triangular shaped bead. And if you look, the measurements are on there just to show you the different sizes, whether it be five, six, seven, eight mil. Um, we got some different sizes on this other one there, all the way up to, we got 14 mil there, a 12. With these, we've also got this plastic clip there, which you can clip onto the profiling tool like that. So before we get started, I just wanna show you the profiling tool quickly and how it works. In summary, you squirt your bead of sealant across the wall, which I'll show you in a minute. You do it slightly bigger than the shape or the gap on your profiling tool. We then run the profiling tool across like that in stages, whip it off, give it a quick clean, put it back on, go across again, and that will shape this nice little triangle. Now, when we get to a grout line like that, the idea of this plastic section here is that as you go like this, it bridges the gap between the two tiles and it gives you a continuous straight line of sealant. If you take that off and you run that across, it will go into the groove there, into that um, grout gap between the tiles, and then that will give you that slight little mark in your sealant when it sets, which you don't really want. If you're applying sealant to a corner with tiles on both sides, you can use both of the attachments on your profiling tool like this, which will stop the sealant dipping into the grout on both sides of the corner. One more thing I wanna show you is this tool, which comes in the kit. And again, we got different profiles on this but we've got one here, which is a perfect 90 degree corner. And the idea of this, if we turn it around that way, if you've laid any sealant and you don't want it there, you've made a mistake and you wanna get rid of it. If you place that up to the corner like that, that, when you drag it across, will completely remove all that sealant so you can start again. And just to show you exactly how good this removal tool is, I'm gonna sacrifice a bit of sealant and my bath here. So say that's up against your wall. This will take it off your tiles and off your bathtub or shower tray. You literally just scrape it like that and that will take up everything. Like I said earlier, get a wet wipe, give it a clean, go over it again like that. And that is truly how good that is. It will take everything off. So as long as you don't leave it on too long, if you make a mistake, get this over it and you'll be fine. And you can always run a wet wipe over 
it afterwards anyway just to be sure let it dry off go back on with your sealant so back to this tool if you just move this around like that you can work out which profile you need is what you're trying to do is obviously bridge the gap between this surface here which in my case is a bathtub and this surface here which is my wall my tiles if you've got a large gap you obviously need to cover the gap between the two so you need to use the suitable profile in my case that gap's not too big so i'm going to use the eight millimeter and that is this one here and for me that's plenty big enough to cover the gap and it's not too big that it looks stupid, but it's not too small that it's not gonna give decent protection. You can see with the sealant, I've already used it for my basin the other day. So I've put a screw in it for now just to stop it going off. But where I've actually cut the hole in this, you can see that it's a little bit smaller where I did the basin. I'm now gonna make that slightly larger because again, you want your hole to be a little bit bigger than the profile you're using. So if I'm using an eight mil profile, ideally you want something nine or 10 mil wide. I mean, you can just sort of fudge in the, um, the sealant make it a bit bigger but it's easier to cut it a bit bigger and when you run your profiling tool along it's got something to take away and leave that nice bead of sealant so i'm just going to remove the screw using a screwdriver like that and this is why i use a screw they're perfect because they create a nice airtight seal but you can also unscrew them nice and simple like that now i'm just going to use my knife to trim the nozzle down a bit and when it comes to cutting the nozzle some people like to do it at 90 degrees, some do it at an angle. I like to do it at an angle only because when there's tight angles like over there in the corner, if you can't get in the corner yourself and push this forward, if you've got it at an angle, you can still run the end of that nozzle flush with the wall. So that's why I do it, but it's entirely up to you because at the end of the day, the profiling tool is what's gonna get us out of trouble and create the bead later. So with your sealant gun, if you just push down that button there, you can slide that back, place your tube of sealant, into the gun, and then just pull the gun until it goes firm. There we go, onto the sealant. Line this up so the nozzle's exactly where you want it, and we can start to apply the sealant. So just one more quick point to make, if your bathtub is a brand new installation, then the first time you use it, you add some water and the weight of a person, it's highly likely to have some movement. So now is a good time to fill your bathtub about half full with water. This will take out some of the movement of the bathtub. Then when we apply our bead of sealant, let it go off and remove the water, the bathtub will return to its original position. This way, the sealant will already be prepared for that additional weight, which will prevent it cracking or trying to pull away from the wall in the future. In my situation, the bathtub was installed years ago most of the movement has already taken place in the floor or in the bath frame and in addition to that i actually put in a really solid timber frame all around this bath so to be honest the movement in this particular bathtub is absolutely minimal so for that reason i'm not going to fill the bathtub with water but i'll leave that decision up to you so taking my sealant i'm going to start off just around the corner you can't actually see that on the camera there we go I'm just going to run a nice thick bead of sealant like that, making sure I'm trying to push it into the gap underneath as I go, because this will take quite a bit of sealant here with the gap underneath. Behind here is where it gets a bit tricky. You've just got to improvise. Get your sealant gun in like that. I'm going to turn that around and come the other way. There we go. Now I'm not going to worry about some of the thin sections because the profiling tool might make that up now. Before I start, I always like to use a wet wipe. Just give my profiling tool a quick wash like that. Then turning this with the flat end on your side, so you're pulling this way, not on the right hand side. You want the flat end that way as you drag it along. I'm gonna start by here. Now you'll notice I haven't actually used the tool there. And I'll explain why in a second. I'm going to go back. And taking your blue roll, you can wipe that off 
like that. And then using the wet wipe, just quickly go over the profiling tool again like that and carry on. Again, just wipe off any surplus with your blue roll. Quick go with the wipe like that. Actually just gonna apply a little bit more by there like that. And the reason I'm not using this tool is I notice these tiles aren't bang on flat. So I've actually just sort of done it a bit freehand. I'll go over it in a minute. So although that tool is good, if the tiles are slightly out, it's gonna work with the width of the tiles anyway. So here we go. If I just lightly go over that, okay. Slight angle. And this is where it gets tricky because we're going behind the tap. So what's nice with these profiling tools is because they're thin, you can kind of work your way behind it. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not going to be perfect because where you go at a slight angle like that, you're obviously reducing or increasing the size of the bead. Having said that, you know, you can sort of improvise a bit and it's better than not being able to get in there at all. So, and as it's behind the tap, it's highly unlikely you're going to notice any slight change in the depth anyway. Just trying to be careful not to get this on the tap a minute. If I can get in there and swerve that back out, we'll be on the straight and narrow. And unfortunately, when you do this job, it does seem like a waste of sealant because you end up taken off a lot of sealant but that's just one of those things because it's taken off the sealant that allows you to get that lovely clean finish and for me these wet wipes are absolutely invaluable because you just give everything a little clean as you go along and then there's no worry there's no panic but like you can see there it seems like such a waste but it is what it is you know if you get a nice bead of sealant at the end of it then hopefully you're only going to do this once every so many years and in the corner so all you really have to do is just kind of get your tool in as hard as you can like that and then just turn it around like that and now is what I'll do is go over that, that thin bit that I've just dragged out. When I do this side, I'll go over that after. Whoa, just having to wipe my camera now. I've got sealant all over the handle of my camera, eh? The joys of YouTube and DIY. Not as easy as this vlogging nonsense, is it? So hopefully the wide angle will allow you to see a bit of this, even though it has got a big shadow on it. And typical, my camera's in the way. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to change the angle and go over here. I hope you all appreciate the effort I put into these videos. Right, that one should be relatively easy. He says, famous last words. So again, I'm just wiping into that cloth like that. That's the one I'm using for the surplus sealant. And then I just a little go with the wet wipe again like that. And hopefully now this won't bridge this gap with too much sealant. Okay. 
Again, I'm going to fall short at the corner like that. And that way, I'm not mucking around with a big blob of sealant on my profiling tool when I try to take this round the bend. I'm just going to take that into the corner like that. There we go, whip away. And I can carry on with that one as a separate bead of sealant now. Obviously there again, we've got a gap under these tiles. So I am squirting that relatively hard to get it in the joint underneath the tiles. So I want to make sure it fills that gap so we've got a good bead of sealant. Again, I'm going to whip that off short of the end. So if you come into the corner with a full blob of sealant on your profiling tool, you basically make a mess. You can see how this can be used in exactly the same way around curved edges. Then once you've finished, if you've got any sealant left, I just like to give it a quick wipe like that with my wet wipe. Then we get the screw, like earlier. Choose a screw that's roughly the same size as your hole. You want it tight, obviously, not too loose. And then if you take your screwdriver like this, you can actually screw it in and a thread will create a seal. It also means that if it gets really tight, you either use a handheld screwdriver or you can use your impact driver and actually release the screw next time you use it if the sealant gets a bit hard. And that should preserve your sealant, certainly in the short term. So there we go, that's the finished job. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying by any means that this is an absolutely perfect finish, but I think it's a pretty decent finish that any DIYer can achieve using a profiling tool. And as you've seen in this video, using a profiling tool really can get you out of a sticky situation quite literally. If your bead's too thick, you can go over it using a smaller profile. If you've done a bad quality bead, you can use the removal tool and remove the sealant completely. And as long as you're clean, you use your wipes, you use your paper towel, you take your time, you can pretty much get around a bathtub in a few minutes without making much mess. If you're interested in any of the products or the tools I use in this video, I'll put a link to those in the description section below. If you enjoyed the video, then please give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon for regular notifications. I've been pouncing around the house. Ta-ta, farewell.